How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this really cool, satisfying animation. It's kind of a variant of one I made a while back, but we're gonna add some cool things and some really fun uh, Boolean magic here with this one. So we will get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. So I'm gonna go here to a new scene. If you wanna get that file, you can actually grab it on Patreon if you want on all three tiers. Uh, here in the camera section, we're gonna set up our cycles settings first. So let's go here to cycles. You can go to GPU if you have your GPU. I'm gonna go ahead on my viewport and make it 32 samples to make it easier on my recording and 300 samples on my render. You can turn on denoising if you'd like. On my light paths, I'm just gonna click and drag and make everything one and then turn that off. And this is really gonna optimize your render. It's gonna make it really fast. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and add in a cube to get our sphere going. So, which doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna make a cube to make a sphere, but we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and we're gonna click it till we get a nice amount of density. Something like this, that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a, a cast modifier and bring our value, our factor to one. That's gonna make a perfect circle. And then right over here, just hit control A and hit control A and that's gonna apply this whole mesh. So now we can get onto the difficult part of Booleans. I know Booleans can be frustrating, but we're gonna kind of make it simple for this. So let's go ahead and get in our torus. And one thing you'll notice is you can see how this is really dense. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get my matte cap on so you can kind of see it more obviously. Make it nice and, uh, nice and orange. Oop, that's way too much, it hurts my eyes. So you can see how there's a very different densities here. So on the torus, you wanna try to match that density with your major and minor segments. So something like this, and then bring this in. And so now you can kind of make them similar. Now they don't need to be exact, but they need to be relatively the same. So if we go here to our wireframe, notice how they're relatively the same now. Of course, if you click away, you won't be able to add more geometry, but that's okay. So now that we're here, we're gonna stay here in wireframe view, and I wanna go ahead and cut straight down the middle of this torus into this sphere. So I'm just gonna hit S and, um, actually go on this side here, I'm gonna hit S and bring it to the middle. Notice where the sphere is, right there. So you'll see the middle, and we wanna add this edge right here on this middle to make the Boolean work um, relatively. So now we're gonna click on the sphere here and add in a Boolean modifier. Right here in object, click that torus and you'll see it worked. So we're gonna go here, control A and apply that. And right here I'm gonna hit RX90. And then we'll click on here and do the same thing. So Boolean, Object, Torus, Control A to apply, and I can delete this. So now we have this nice object, but the problem is if I go here to Shade Smooth, it's ugly. So first thing we're gonna do right here in the vertex, right here on Normals, click Auto Smooth, and that's gonna really fix pretty much what we're working with, but the bevel modifier won't work here. So I quickly wanna give a shout out to Josh Graham Bell for helping me with the beveling on this because I couldn't figure it out. We're gonna do some shader based beveling with the bevel node. So that's why we're using cycles. This will not work in Eevee right now. So we here, go here to shading. I'm gonna go ahead and kill these windows. I hit the period key to go to the view here. And then right here on cycles, I'm gonna click that. And then right here on this drop down, I'm just gonna click and drag and get some default lighting. It won't render this lighting, this is just viewport. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click a new material. I'm gonna give my base color to black so we can kind of ease more easily see that bevel and then we'll switch to the color we want later. Shift A, search, bevel. Right there, I'm gonna bring my samples up to eight and my radius at 0 0.02 and watch what happens. Let's check out these bevels. We go here to the normal, into the normal and now 
it is nice and beveled. Look at that, look how nice that is. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our base color all the way up into whatever color you want. I like orange, so we're gonna do orange and then bring my roughness down a little bit like this. So now it's nice and reflective and great and pretty and everything we want ever. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit the H button and we're gonna go ahead and get just a regular UV sphere. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit tab, right click, subdivide, bring that smoothness up. Bring it to something like this. And what I'm gonna do now is a little bit of modeling. So we're gonna go here to the edge select tool. Right here in this middle one, I'm gonna go ahead and hit alt, click that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up to the middle. And then I'm gonna go and get a loop cut, loop cut it right there. So now they're about the same. And then we're gonna go here to the uh, face select. I'm gonna hit control and click right there. So it might go like uh, like that. If you click on the wire, the line, it's gonna go this way. So now I'm gonna hit E for extrude and S to extrude it in. And we're doing this so when it's rotating, you can actually see more obvious rotation. We're gonna use a really simple material. So having that line will make it obvious that it's rotating. So now that we're here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit um, C and just select this right here. So make sure nothing else is selected, which that was selected. I'm gonna hit C and I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that that's the only thing selected, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control plus, and you can hold it down to make it go fast. And we're gonna do some material selections right now. Right there, that's what we wanna select. So what, let's go over here to the material button. I'm gonna hit the plus icon, and I'm just gonna use that material we just created on the other object, and I'm gonna hit plus again, click new, and then right here, I'm gonna click on this, go to the hex, and control C, copy that. And I'm gonna go ahead and control V, paste that there. And then we're gonna make this fully rough, zero roughness on that. And then let's go back to tab and actually we'll watch it happen here. See how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and on this new really glossy material, I'm going to assign it. And so now you can see it's split between really glossy and really not glossy, shade smooth. And that's how it looks right now. And that's going to make it really obvious that it's rotating. Now we do want to go ahead and bevel this. So let's add a bevel modifier. And then we're going to bring that amount, something like this and bring your segments up. So now it looks way, way, way better. Now let's go ahead and attach this and attach this to a line. So I'm going to hit shift A and get a curve, add the curve, go back to our circle and we're going to get our constraints, add object constraint. And we're going to go to follow path, target, Bezier circle. So now we can just go ahead and scale him down and you go to the offset, it's gonna do that. Really fun. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little eyeball, eyeball tool here on the cube and then I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the right. Let's go ahead and size this up. So I'm gonna click on the wire and bring this in until this can actually kind of live on it. Perfect, that's pretty good. That looked just about perfect here. So now this will be able to go around in a circle. So what we want to do now is animate this to go in a circle. So here on the rotations, I'm on the, on the Y, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y so that it looks like it's actually moving that direction. That's what we want. And then we're going to go here on this guy and on the Z, rotate that animation. So here in your preferences, you go to edit preferences and click on the animation. Make sure your default interpolation is on linear and then bring this up. I'm gonna keep the default to 50 frames, that's fine. And we're gonna go back one arrow, hitting the back arrow. So we're on frame zero. <clears throat> so again, on the Z, we're gonna rotate it by 720 on the Z, but I'm gonna teach you guys a really cool trick. So if you wanna say like, I want this to rotate by 360 degrees, which is gonna make a perfect loop, but I wanted to do it twice. Well, how do I do that? That's 360 times two. Well, you can do that within Blender. So you click here, type in 360 asterisk, I think that's an asterisk. Two, enter, that says 720. So that's really, really cool. So I'm gonna click on the keyframe here, go to the end and do that again, 360 asterisk two, or just type in 720, enter, and do that. Now we need one more little step of math. Now I did the work for you and figured out how many rotations does this need to do to make it look like it's actually like rotating, rolling again, uh, I mean, on this object, which is, 1800, which is, we'll do the math here. So this needs to animate on the Z. So click the keyframe, 
go to the end and I'm going to type in 360 asterisk 5, it's 5 rotations, enter, insert keyframe. And now we're going crazy. So there we go. Now, what we'll all I need to do now is just go ahead and duplicate this sphere here. Go back to the uh, constraints and we're going to go ahead and just type in negative 50 and that's going to pop him on the direct other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate one more and bring him like right there. So now they're doing that. What I want to do now is get another line that's going to go that way. So I'm going to click on this guy and then click on this uh, the circle, shift D. Now only click on the circle and hit RX 90. And then we need to reanimate this uh, little circle here. So go back to your settings here. Clear keyframes, I just hit right click and clear keyframes. And we need to animate it on the Y. So if it's going that way, we're gonna do negative a negative value. So we'll go to the very end and animate this circle at negative 720 here. So go back to frame zero, click that, go to the very end, negative 720, click that and now it's rotating, but now we're having some intersection. But these constraints are gonna allow us to be able to fix that very easily. So let's go about right here, go back to our constraints, click on this, the sphere and bring it up here. And you want it to barely miss that one. So now we can see, I want it to just barely miss it and that's gonna to add to the satisfying element of this animation. Now it's barely missing it. So now what we can do is just go ahead and add one more sphere. So I'm gonna hit Shift D and move it over to this side and make sure he's not gonna intersect with anything which looks like he's not. Now we have this whole thing. Now we need to rotate this guy. So what we're gonna do is parent some objects to this. So click here, hold down Shift, click here, and then click this one big one as the end. Clicking that and I'm gonna hit Control P for parent, click object. And so now that does that number. So let's go ahead and animate that. So let's click back on our transform settings. And then right here, I'm gonna click and drag, go to the very end, click and drag and type in 360 and then drag. And so now it's gonna be animating the way that we want. Let's go ahead and make this scene pretty. We've pretty much finished the concept of this, but now we can go ahead and make a scene. I'm gonna make it a pretty simple scene, kind of give you room to add whatever you wanna to add to it. So let's go here to the plane. I'm gonna hit S5. I'm gonna to go to the front view here just to make sure we're doing it right. I'm gonna hit Tab. I'm gonna to go to the uh, edge select and then click on this edge right here and then just um, hit E and then Z. So extrude on the Z axis like that. Let's add in a bevel modifier to make this kind of an infinite background like that, shade smooth. Now we have this fun little number. I'm gonna go here to the front view and then wait for one of these spheres to be on the bottom. So just like that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this up till that sphere is almost touching the ground. So now if we check out the animation, everything works really good, but nothing touches the floor. I'm gonna hit the tilde key again, go to the front and add a camera. And then I'm just gonna go to bring it up like that, bring it back, I hit zero, and then go here to your camera settings and give it an 85 millimeter lens. I hit G and middle click, and then I'm gonna hit G, just kind of move it down. So now let's go ahead and add our lighting to this scene. So I'm just gonna go here and uh, give it area light, area light up here, make it relatively big. I'm gonna go from square to disc. 300 on the strength and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift D move it over here and I'm gonna hit R to rotate it scale it down a little bit and then we need one more light so I'm gonna hit this guy hit shift D kind of move it over here I'm hitting G to move it around and then hit R twice to rotate it now let's check out how it looks in cycles all right, cool, we have a nice scene. I can really make him like 800 to kind of make a little bit more dramatic lighting here. And then right here, I'm gonna give this kind of a darker gray 
even bring it over to a slight blue. Now we have a nice scene and maybe make this light 800 as well. Now we have some lighting. It's pretty basic, so you can go ahead and add whatever you want to the rest of this to make it look cool. But now we're done. Let me show you how to export this and we will be on our way. So click on this printer icon, select a file where you wanna save it if you wanna do a PNG sequence. If you don't want that, you want Blender to just compile a video for you, just kind of ready made. Again, pick where you wanna save it, go from PNG to FFmpeg video, NP encoding to MPEG4, and encoding speed, sorry, output quality to perceptually lossless render animation. And you'll be done. And when you're done, you'll have a really cool, satisfying animation to do whatever you want with. Again, if you guys want to check out real-time materials, that is in the description, and I will see you in the next tutorial.